over improving your property as a seller. So this is what I mean. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here today. This is Sam from Sabiri 6 Real Estate and Remax Real Estate Realty Inc. Uh, top five mistakes in my opinion that sellers make when they wanna sell their houses. Now these mistakes are derived from my personal experiences when I work with sellers and they say, hey, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And I tell them, hey, I think that would be a mistake or going that, down, down that path is not the best. So they're derived from those experiences as well as uh, just experience of other colleagues of mine having them tell me stories about what is a mistake when I was newer in the industry, right? So these are the top five mistakes. Uh, please subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Uh, one thing though, this is these uh, five items are not necessarily ordered in terms of importance or significance or how rampant they are. They're just randomly ordered, okay? There's no significance into the way they're prioritized on the list. Number five, when homeowners list their property for sale, meaning they put it on the market as soon as they have any inclination, wants, or desire to sell. Meaning, if you're a homeowner and for some reason you get motivated to sell your property, if you wanna upgrade or downsize, whatever the reason is, as soon as you get that thought in your mind, that inclination that yes, we should sell our property, it is a mistake for you to do it as soon as possible. Uh, believe it or not, not, a, not all agents tell you, oh, you should sell all the time. There are a significant portion who, who do do that because that's how we make money. If you wanna sell regardless of whether it is the best time for you to sell or not, most agents don't care, they just wanna make money. Uh, me personally, and not because I'm wise behind my ears or whatever, uh, I've learned this from um, colleagues and uh, mentors of mine, like my father who works in the industry, he says if you tell every uh, seller that right now is the best time to sell, then that uh, sows distrust amongst you and your potential client base. You have to be honest. If it's not the best time to sell, don't just say so to get a listing and put your face out there. So for that reason, I suggest if you are a homeowner and if you want to sell, and one of the mistakes is for you to, as soon as possible, as soon as you can, to put it on the market for the sale to see what kind of prices you get, what kind of offers you get. Uh, you should sit down with a professional, ideally, uh, an honest one, research your professional as well, research your re realtor as well, and see what he or she says regarding if it is the best time to sell at that current moment or not. Because if it is, then good for you and good for her or him, the realtor, you guys get to sell it, he makes commission, she makes commission, you sell your property. If it is not the best time to sell, uh, you have to listen to the cold hard truth. If your realtor says, or if you do your own market research and find out that it is not the best time to sell, be patient and wait on it. Even though you wanna put it out there as like a fishing mechanism to see what kind of offers it gets. Even if you might, or if you're, even if you're in the stage of curiosity, right? And I think that's a mistake. So that's number five. Number four, when homeowners bid realtors against one another so they can pay the least amount of commission to the selling agent. Now, in my opinion, this is a mistake because you can negotiate with one realtor with regards to how much commission you're gonna pay that realtor for her service, which is helping you advertise, market, and negotiate for the sale of your property. That's perfectly fine in my opinion and it's your right. But when you pit one realtor against one another, or you just go around and shop to see what the least amount of commission is that you have to pay for some realtors to sell it, when you do that, you will get bad service. And here's why. Because most often it is the case that homeowners do say, hey, why would I give you 2.5% when there's this other realtor who's offering to sell for 2%? And they go to that person and say, there's this other guy offering to sell it for me and he says I only have to pay him 1.5%. So when you do that, you get realtors who are desperate and want to reduce their percentage uh, in order to appease you and get some sort of money and with that usually comes bad service. I say usually, not all the time, not all the time. Uh, none, of, none of the things I say are universal and absolute, but usually you do get bad service. Now, once again, I want to differentiate this 
with uh, you as a homeowner telling a real estate agent, hey, honestly, I'm not comfortable paying 2.5%. I might pay 2% to you. Uh, and you're negotiating those terms. Uh, that's perfectly fine. But when you go into the realm of paying a bunch of realtors against each other, at that point, it's a race to the bottom in terms of service, typically. Now, once again, not all the time. So that's number four. Number three, it is a mistake for homeowners to be at home when they list their property for sale and they have potential buyers coming to visit. Now, these showings when I'm working, and, and this is, by the way, the case when I'm both on the selling side and the buying side. I always tell them, don't be home, the sellers. I always tell the buyers, hey, ideally, they should not be home because it makes it an awkward situation. And since most people are generally polite, if me and my buyers, we go to a property and the seller is home on top of the awkwardness that already exists there, two strangers meeting and you have strangers you've never met at your house, inside your house, where you only reserve for friends and family. On top of that level of uh, discomfort, you have also a further level of discomfort that actually have negative impact on your valuation of the property as a buyer because when the homeowner is home, you're less likely to want to go to see the master bedroom or the closets, you know, or a particular bathroom here and there. You're not freely wandering around the property as you would have, even if the property was um, occupied, but at that very moment that you're seeing it empty and vacant, right? So for those reasons, I, I think it's a mistake. and really does hurt. Uh, I don't know the psychological underpinnings of why, but in my experience, when the property is great, uh, my clients are not uh, that much enamored with it, even if it's objectively great, if you were to take their experience out of it, they're not enamored with it if they, once they see it and the first time they see it, the seller is home and kind of peering at them here and there. It's awkward, it makes it for a bad showing uh, on both sides really. And yeah, I, I suggest against it all the time. So that's number three. Number two, over improving your property as a seller. So this is what I mean. If you have an older property that's clean, there's no major structural damage or defects. Everything is great. Uh, the countertop, the cabinets and the kitchen, the doors, but it's just an older property. You know, uh, it doesn't have a modern look. It doesn't have a modern uh, flavor to it. If you take those antiquated aesthetic um, designs which are once again not broken everything is 100 percent or 90 percent condition if you take those and renovate them pour more money into them to make the property more modern in order to sell it now why is this a mistake now once again no absolute sometimes this is not a mistake you have to look at the particular area you're selling at what kind of uh, market you want to exploit in terms of who your seller base is or rather who your buyer base is all those things being equal, typically, and at times I would say with older properties that are not obviously so old that they're heritage, right? I'm talking about properties made in the 70s and you know 80s sometimes. Uh, with those properties, what why people are build, uh, buying them is either to flip them as investors or to buy them, knock it down, and build them as builders right so you're typically with those older properties not everywhere once again but you're selling 80 percent of the time to builders and investors right moreover you have another client base that you're potentially selling to is a different type of investor a landlord he wants to buy the property doesn't much care about how the property looks in terms of is the granite new you know is it open concept as long as everything is working properly nothing is fixed no structural defects um, as long as all those things are in place, the landlord investor typically does not care that there is a new counter or the fact that you broke down a wall that divided the living room and the family room that's open concept. Landlords don't care about that. As long as the property is structurally sound, nothing extremely wrong with the property, they will buy it and rent it out and people always will occupy it, whether students or working professionals who are young, those people don't necessarily care either. Most people rent for convenience, uh, especially in a big metropolis like Toronto, right? So if you were to over improve your property as a seller, uh, pour five to $15,000 fixing stuff um, that doesn't need to be fixed, 
uh, you're making a mistake because at the end of the day, you might lose out. Now, this is not always a mistake. Sometimes you do have properties that are not the newest of properties, but not necessarily old either. And they have some features that can be modernized and you are selling to a end user base. When you're doing that and you have assessed all the facts and researched the market to see you are selling to a end user base, then yes, you should pour some money into renovating the property. But other than that, I think it is a mistake for you to do that. So that's number two. Okay, number one, I would say number one would have to be when homeowners do not differentiate between chattels and fixtures. Quickly, a chattel is something that's movable. It's a movable possession, movable property. So for instance, refrigerators are chattel. Uh, a office desk is a chattel. A bed frame is a chattel. Um, so those are chattels. Fixtures are not all the time actually, but sometimes things such as blinds or curtains or, or not act the actual fabric, but the metal rod fixed to the house. What it sounds like, a fixture, something fixed to the structure of the property, chandeliers of some kind, right? Those are just examples. So when sellers don't differentiate these two items, and obviously at times it is the fault of the agent because you have a poor agent working for you, when it's not clearly indicated that what comes with the property and what doesn't come with the property is usually boiled down to what's a fixture and what's a chattel, right? I've had in the past, uh, actually I, putting me aside, a colleague of mine told an interesting story the other day where he was selling a property for a client of his and everything was going smoothly and fine. They got an offer, the offer got accepted. Last second, uh, the buyers inquired about a chandelier and my colleague said, yes, uh, we said that all fixtures come with the property. Just to confirm this, he ran it by the seller and the seller said, no, I love that chandelier. That's an expensive chandelier. I'm going to take them. So what happened was they had to go back to the negotiating table and, you know, reorganize the terms and um, conditions of the agreement. So those are the headaches you can avoid. And if you don't differentiate clearly between what I'm going to take with me and what I'm going to sell with the property, that can be a problem. And keep in mind, you can't include chattel in the sale, right? You just have to write in the agreement. So just because something is not fixed to the property does not mean you can't sell it with the property. You can, you can sell it with the furniture. That's always possible and it happens, but you have to be very, very clear and uh, precise in the wording uh, when you say chattel and fixture. So yes, you have to clearly explicate through your agent or if you're a private seller yourself, whether you are selling, for instance, uh, the chandelier or the refrigerator, is the stove, or is it not gonna come with the property? So this is one of the mistakes that you should avoid as a seller, not clearly differentiating between what comes with the property and what does not come with the property. Anyways, that's five mistakes to avoid as uh, sellers. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Uh, there are plenty more mistakes. And in the future, I might make videos about them. Uh, five more mistakes maybe to avoid. So thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, rate, and review.